Thanks to Sana Skin Studio for supporting the No podcast. Sana is a skin studio that is shifting the relationship with your skin and your products through goal-driven facials, real guidance, and clean skincare. Stay tuned for our promo code so you can receive $25 off of your first facial at Sana Skin Studio. Welcome to the No Podcast with me, Nikki Spo. What is up, Light Beams? I'm recording from the other side of my desk today and it feels very zen for me. Like I'm looking at the background and it feels very zen and I'm loving it. I'm just like, oof, I like this space. It feels good. I love taking care of my space. So who takes care of you? You guys, welcome to the know where it's not about knowing everything. It's about coming to know ourselves and then standing in that gorgeous, delicious power. So I've recently released a couple of parent focus episodes, episode 101 with Dr. Erica Velez, where we talked about being an imperfect but mindful parent. And then last week's episode 103, It Takes a Village, which focused on childcare. And it's a topic that makes its way into a lot of my conversations because a lot of my guests are parents. Quick time out because, oh my gosh, it's so wild to hear myself say episodes 101 and 103 because I remember when I was legit terrified to open up this platform for myself and for my audience. And I'm just so excited that we are still rolling. And that said, make sure you don't miss an episode and you can do so by, well, you can not miss the episodes, right? By subscribing to the show on your favorite podcast listening platform. I'm so, so, so grateful for all the listeners because without you, there's really no show. So I mean, it would mean the world to me if you would take a quick moment, you can do this while you're listening, but not driving and leave me a five-star rating and review. It not only helps boost my podcast to the top, hello, we are in the top 2% of podcasts ranked globally, but it also gives listeners insight of what they can expect from the know. Right, so I have a solo episode for you all today, Nikki Spo Unveiled, and today I am asking you to reflect on who takes care of you. I've been feeling like really overwhelmed with child rearing and balancing my work schedule lately. I felt it heavy as we approached the last day of school and I started to panic a little bit about summer plans, camp, and how to sustain the monotony of summer in Miami. In between trips, here and there, don't know what to do, I got overwhelmed. And I got to thinking about how we women, especially moms, have a tendency to take care of everyone and leave ourselves for last. I don't do that so much and I'm going to talk to you about it. But I want to share with you guys like how I combat that, you know, and I don't get it right all the time. But I don't know. I feel like I try to talk about the things that I need or I am going through on this show so that we can have some sense of community about it. And in my mind, we are like having a conversation. (laughs) I just know that I'm like not alone in these feelings of overwhelm and I want to share what's working and when I finally get around to working on those things. So this is not ultimately a conversation about like who does more in the home, men versus women, but I do think that it's a relevant point, which I am going to talk about just a little bit. And then we're going to move on to the meat and potatoes of this episode, which is the how to and the tips and the tricks of what's working versus what it's not working and like the root of all of it. And on that note, I read an article in Forbes written by Maggie McGrath, which was published on April 13th of this year, which focuses on a Pew study of the trend that more women are out earning their opposite sex partners with the household duties remaining the same. She writes, women may be taking back some financial power, but inequitable divisions of caregiving and household responsibilities could stand in the way of fully realizing their economic potential. In marriages that are otherwise egalitarian, Pew found that men are spending more time on leisure activities or relaxing, which is an average of 25.2 hours a week, than women are, who get a median of 21.6 hours of either relaxing or leisure activities. So the men are doing 25 hours on average, women are getting 21 hours. While these wives are logging in an average of 4.6 hours worth of housework, compared to their husband's 1.9 hours of housework. Throw kids into the mix and this the disparities deepen. In households with children under 18, women spend 12 hours a week on caregiving compared to their husband's nine hours. First of all, that example is very, very far. I feel like I need to say this. That example is very, very far from my personal present reality. I mean, to date, I have never out-earned my partner or any of them for that matter in my life. <laughs> maybe someday I will, maybe someday I won't. Who knows? I'm just here to help people, man. <laughs> Also, it should be noted that I know plenty of super involved dads. 
like my dad, who I feel was a great model in this way, and also my kid's dad, who despite working a lot, is still really, really involved. But again, this isn't an episode necessarily about women's economic power. I'll talk about that another day. Or even the disparity between the household child rearing work between moms and dads. But I do find that this is super relevant to how we as women show up for ourselves in a self-care way. I am asking the question in a world where I, Nikki Spo, take care of so many other people and things, who takes care of me? And I want you to ask yourself that too. Who takes care of you? My answer is me. Now, I am entering a really, what I think is beautiful phase of my life where I am really leaning hard into my divine feminine, which allows space and grace for others to step in and care for me. I love, love, love being taken care of emotionally, spiritually, and physically. I love being loved on. Like, I really love being loved on. But I truly did not come to a space of accepting my own divine feminine until I learned how to take care of myself. And I do think that it's important that women do know how to take care of themselves in all of the ways. And yet, just because I can doesn't mean I have to or want to all the time. But generally, and I feel this way about work and most aspects of life, I feel most empowered when I know how to do things for myself. And if I choose to delegate or if I welcome the opportunity to be cared for, it's like a delicious bonus. In short, how can I expect anyone to meet my needs if I can't meet my own? That said, here are a few of the ways that I do take care of myself. Look, I don't do these things all of the time at the same time because hello life, but these are some of the ways that I come home to myself, which in turn allow me to be a better person to hopefully everybody in my life. The first thing like I have to say about taking care of myself is like getting the F off of my phone. I swear half of my anxiety comes from being on the phone. That's not to discredit like actual stressful events in my life, but if I'm totally honest, my phone is a big source of stress. Don't get me wrong, it's also a huge source of inspiration. I read on my phone, I find articles, I learn about things that I like, like dance, art, fashion, music, beauty, other podcasts, comedy, you know, you name it. But I surf pics and social media a lot also. I text a lot. The phone has like become an extension of me and it gets in the way of what's really, really important sometimes, like being fully present with myself and my children, enjoying a workout fully instead of recording it, which, you know, obviously is part of what I do with my platform, but there's always a time and a, and a place. Also, it's like I don't even know that I'm doing it, but I'm like low key, mostly unintentionally comparing myself to whatever it is that I'm looking at. And that's that I consider myself to be conscious about comparison. On any given slightly more insecure day, I'm like intentionally comparing myself in some form of like self-deprecating capacity because sometimes it feels good to be whiny, but not really, right? It doesn't actually feel good. Like sometimes like it feels good to get into a row where we're like, eh, everything sucks. Like that doesn't actually feel good. Even if we think like, oh my God, I just need this moment. I just need this moment, which we do. We do need the moments. Okay. So Getting off my phone is really hard. I'm a busy mom and I do most of my work on my phone, emails, content, getting inspiration for episodes. I can, as most people can, do literally anything from my phone, but it gets mishmashy for me. Like my attention gets pulled in a bunch of different directions because of all the accessibility. So it's important for me, especially when I have to write content and take care of my business, to put the phone down on do not disturb and keep it like physically away from me. And I've started to do this with my kids, too, because like we said in another episode, you know, kids notice when you're not present. And so I had to like actually just keep the phone when I'm with my children. I have to keep it in another room because like I will reach for it. I like there will be a lull in like whatever the hell it is we're doing, whether it's playing with Legos or dinosaur, be, pretending to be dinosaurs or me like, you know, with baby doing baby things. I will reach for my phone and then I'll inevitably hear mommy, mommy. Kids know. Kids know that you're not paying attention. All right. But we do that with ourselves, too. So this doesn't just have to do with like taking care of business. It has to do again with being present with my family and also myself, which I don't actually always want to be present with myself. I don't always want to be present with myself because that means sometimes I have to sit with uncomfortable feelings or thoughts or just like boredom, which is a whole other topic that I wasn't planning on talking about today. But like, it's okay. We say this like as parents for, for our kids, like it's okay to let them be bored every once in a while because that's like where your imagination kicks in. I'm allowed to be bored. You know, like I have to get comfortable with like being bored sometimes because that's where like my imagination and my creative juices can get really flowing. But it is uncomfortable to have to sit with my feelings or thoughts, which brings me to my next point of taking care of myself. 
I write. I will literally sometimes just write sentences, just like short sentences, like I'm feeling frustrated or I'm feeling sad or I am so fucking overwhelmed by raising a family. Sometimes I feel ugly things like I hate my body or I am unlovable. So I wrote, write those things down too. And then I take a look at each sentence and I assess its validity. Do I feel frustrated? Why? I check in on the circumstances and literally recite the serenity prayer, which usually when I'm going into it, I'm rolling my eyes at myself because I know. But like for real, oh yes, serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Got it. Courage to change the things I can. Got it. And the wisdom to know the difference. I know. But like for real, even if I'm annoyed talking to myself and saying that, which I usually do in prayer form, it is an actual reality check for me. And then there's like the mean thoughts and the feelings that I have towards myself, like stating that I am unlovable. Here in these moments, I question the truth scale. Do I know this sentence to be 100% without a doubt to be true? For the negative feelings and thoughts that I write down, they're usually completely untrue, like completely false because feelings are not facts. Our thoughts are not even facts. So as an antidote to my ugly comments towards myself, I cross out the original sentence and I replace it with usually the opposite. I also offer myself space to allow two things to be true at once. For example, I am so overwhelmed with momming right now and I am still a great mom and I'm doing my best every day. I am unlovable becomes I love myself and I choose myself first and foremost always. What a joy that I actually love myself. Beyond that, I have many family members and friends who love me dearly. But I do think that it it has been important for me to actually like write the darker thoughts and feelings down. I am not into bypassing. I am not into false positivity. I think it's really important to honor our crappy moments and still see the beauty in our circumstances. Honestly, if I didn't practice and build upon this skill because it is a skill, then 2022, last year, would have been way more devastating than it ultimately was. Another way that I take care of myself is by delegating, straight up. I think it's really important to delegate what you can. We are not robots. We can't do everything. And when we can't delegate, I think it's crucial to trust that not everything has to be done today. Some things just have to wait until tomorrow and that's okay. Another thing that I do is I actually schedule time for fun and rest on my calendar. I literally block it off on my iCal. I do not book any meetings, recordings, appointments during that time. Daily. Some days it alternates between rest and fun. Like some days I require more fun than rest and vice versa. But whatever it is for that day, it is. And the phone is not involved. (laughs) The phone, right? But whatever it is for that day, it is. And the phone is not involved. I get it. Surfing IG can be considered, quote, fun for some, but it's not the fun that I'm talking about. I'm talking about doing something that brings you pure joy, laughter, or happiness. All right, the next thing that I do, and it sounds very, very simple, and it is very simple, is to take a freaking shower. There's just something about waters, cleansing, right? If I'm having a meltdown, I'm like, please hold and allow me to shower. I've done a lot of things in the shower, you guys. I'm not going to lie. I've done a lot of things in the shower, but two of which involve sobbing hysterically and also having dance parties to my favorite music. And most of the time, let's be real, I'm just washing myself, which in itself is symbolic. We are fresh. We are fresh when we come out of the shower. Okay. Here's the thing that I keep coming back to when I think about the title of this episode, Who Takes Care of You? I feel that sense of duality. Why? Because for as long as I remember, I have always taken care of myself financially, emotionally, and beyond. And I grew so tired, like really, really tired. You know, I was also living very heavily in my masculine energy to the point that when I would have romantic partners, I would have very little expectations for them to provide for me in any capacity. And I'm not necessarily talking about financially. And for more on that, you like, please check out my money story in episode 31. I'm talking about like in all of the ways. Like I took care of myself as a means for survival. And in doing so, I never wanted to give anyone else power over me in the form of taking care of me in any way. And in adopting this subconscious mindset, I taught people how to treat me. I showed everyone how strong and capable I was. My romantic partner, friends, family, everyone knew and still knows 
that I am the type of chick who gets shit done and can make almost anything happen and I am fiercely independent. I'm someone you want on your team. And it brings me to this saying that I think about a lot now. Just because I carry it well doesn't mean it is not heavy. Over the last three years, which I consider to be a bulk of my healing journey at like a very rapid pace, I have come to learn that while I sure can do anything and take care of myself, I want to share in my caring, okay? I want to be cared for, taken care of. And so I began to whine. Why doesn't anybody take care of me? Wow, oh my gosh, victim, right? Like, why isn't anybody taking care of me? Okay, and that energy sucks too. I had to have a sort of reckoning with myself. I had to learn that I have to actually fully, wholly, completely love and cherish myself in order to A, adequately take care of myself and B, allow myself to be taken care of. But I want to stress this, especially to younger women who might be in like the dating phase of their lives. I needed to fully understand my needs, boundaries and desires and be fully capable of me giving myself everything before ever expecting or desiring someone to do those things for me. Love, I needed to love myself first. Then I can let you love me. Friendship, I am a good friend to myself first and foremost. Now I can go be a great friend and allow great friends to come to me. Money, I know how to provide for myself. I know how to be self-sufficient. I am capable. Now I can welcome financial assistance or care into my life should I please. My point is that we should not have to wholly rely on people, places, and things outside of ourselves to give us what we need. And even if it's tiring to learn how to do these things for ourselves, especially the self-love part, it is so important that we do. We cannot expect others to be able to do things for us that we ourselves are incapable of doing for us. That is not empowerment. That is a recipe for handing over your ownership and autonomy. So yes, I am stepping into a very feminine era of my life where I welcome all the love and the support and the encouragement and cheer and joy into my life. But receiving it from others does not fill me for I am already overflowing with these qualities. I know their source. Their source comes from me. Everything else, those are the cherries on top, guys. So I hope that you feel empowered today, my loves, to love yourself and to take care of yourself. Like really take care of you. I love you all. Thanks for listening to this episode of Nikki Spo Unveiled. Keep coming back for more goodness. XOXO over and out. This podcast was brought to you by Sana Skin Studio. Be sure to use my code, the no glow for $25 off of your first facial at Sana when booking via sanaskinstudio.com. More than a skin studio, Sana is a movement towards healthier skin and self-love. Thank you so much for listening to The No. If you loved this episode, go ahead and share it with a friend. Words are so powerful and someone may need to hear what we covered today. And if you really loved this episode, please take a moment to rate the show and leave a review. Your comments are so important and valued and they give other listeners insight on what to expect on The No. You can connect with me personally via Instagram at Nikki Sap Spo and The No with Nikki Spo. My hope for you today is that you are fearless in looking inward so that you can be your highest, most authentic self and go after the life of your dreams.